Hey friends, Mark Guido here with Grand Adventure, and in this episode, we are here in the UP of Michigan to visit Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. So come along. Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore follows 42 miles of the Lake Superior shoreline in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, stretching from Munising to Grand Marais and encompassing picturesque rock formations, waterfalls, and sand dunes. The North Country National Scenic Trail extends the length of the lakeshore, providing beautiful views along the trail for both backpackers and day hikers. Pictured Rocks derives its name from the 15 miles of colorful sandstone cliffs immediately northeast of Munising, near the western end of the lakeshore that we'll visit momentarily. We're going to travel through the National Lakeshore from west to east, beginning at Sand Point on the outskirts of Munising. Pictured Rocks has some of the most beautiful, pristine beaches found anywhere on Lake Superior. Sheltered along Munising Bay, Sand Point Beach offers shallow water, less waves, in usually slightly warmer water than other park beaches. The U.S. Congress designated Pictured Rocks the first national lakeshore in the United States in 1966, governed by the National Park Service. A variety of recreational opportunities await visitors year-round, including hiking, backcountry camping, kayaking, boating, swimming, scuba diving, and fishing, and winter activities, including snowmobiling, ice climbing, and cross-country skiing. The cliffs of Pictured Rocks reach up to 200 feet above lake level and have been naturally sculpted into a variety of shallow caves, arches, and formations resembling castle turrets, like here at Miner's Castle, where the inner turret collapsed into Lake Superior in 2006. Miner's Castle is one of the most famous landmarks along the Pictured Rock shoreline, and is the only cliff area in the park accessible by vehicle. Adjacent to Miner's Castle lies the nearly mile-long Miner's Beach, a beautiful stretch of coastline where a group of visiting kayakers is receiving safety instruction from several commercial guides. Pets are allowed on leash at Miner's Beach. Within the National Lakeshore, roads come close to the Lake Superior shoreline only near Miner's Castle, 12 Mile Beach, and the Grand Sable Dunes. Other areas require a boat or a healthy hike, as we're going to do today from the trailhead at the end of the dirt Chapel Road. The National Lakeshore's Chapel area was named by early European explorers and is found on early maps as La Chapelle. The trail leads us along an abandoned roadbed through a thick lush green forest as we travel north towards the shoreline of Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. 
Near the halfway point, our trail to the lake passes Chapel Falls. As water cascades some 60 feet down the sandstone cliffs on its way to Chapel Lake. Now that we've left Chapel Falls behind, we've left the old roadbed behind as well. We're now hiking along a narrow trail for the rest of the way to the lake. Pets are prohibited on the trails in this area of the National Lakeshore, so we had to leave Zoe behind. But pets are permitted on trails in other sections of the park, a sharp contrast to the strict no pets rules in place in most areas operated by the National Park Service. After about 3.5 miles, we've reached Chapel Beach, a picturesque sand beach containing high bluffs, the mouth of the Chapel River, and the famous Chapel Rock. There was once an archway connecting the rock to the mainland, but it collapsed in the 1940s. It's been a pleasant visit to Chapel Beach, but we have lots more to see. So it's time to head back to the trailhead and continue eastward through the rest of the National Lakeshore. The Grand Sable Dunes at the eastern end of the lakeshore were formed when sand washed ashore by wave action was blown up slope by the prevailing northerly winds until it came to rest atop a glacial moraine. They form a five mile long sand slope that rises from Lake Superior at a 35 degree angle. The summits of the tallest dunes are as high as 275 feet above lake level. In the late 19th century, loggers in this area built here a wooden log slide from the top of the dunes to Lake Superior below to facilitate the transportation of timber from the area. Legend has it that logs sent down the tall dunes on a dry log chute would generate enough friction to cause the chute to catch fire. For our brief visit to this part of the UP, we're staying at the Country Village RV Park in Ishpeming which is home to numerous cabins and large full hookup RV sites and tent campsites. Full hookup campsites cost $49 per night, while tent campers pay $35 and cabin rentals cost $75 per night.
There's a large swimming pool and hot tub available for soaking after a long day of hiking. Our RV park is located in Ishpeming, at the heart of the UP's iron mining country. This part of the UP has been on a decline since mining peaked here in the 1950s and 60s. Thanks to an influx of Norwegian immigrants in the 19th century, Ishpeming is considered the birthplace of organized skiing in the United States, thanks to the Norden Ski Club formed here in the 1880s. They've been jumping here continuously ever since. The National Ski Association, the forerunner of the present-day U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, was founded in Ishpeming in 1905. Ishpeming is therefore home to the U.S. National Ski Hall of Fame and Museum. Just our luck though, the museum is only open limited days during the COVID-19 pandemic. And those days of the week don't coincide with our visit to Ishpeming. So we really hope that you've enjoyed coming along with us on our American Heartland Tour 2020 to Painted Rocks National Lakeshore. We will definitely return to this area as there's much more to see and do, especially when the National Ski of Snowboard Hall of Fame and Museum here in Ishpeming is actually open. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the corner and ring that notification bell. That way you come along on all of our grand adventures. And we would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. Now, it's extremely important to us that if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up down below the video. And while you're down there, that's also where you'll find the comment section. That's where we'd love to hear from you after each and every episode. Coming up next week, we're going to take our American Heartland Tour 2020 further west here on the UP. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.